Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, I'm Debbie Weiss, and I'm here to help you navigate the cesspool that is middle age dating. I started dating um, when I was 50 after I lost my husband. And after I'd been at it a few years, I had one serious question, and that is, where are all the grown-up men? And I mean the men who had reasonably tidy homes and their fridges were filled with edible food and, you know, their homes were reasonably maintained. <laughs> and they communicated like grown-ups. Um, you know, when I started dating again, I discovered that the dating of my youth was dead. You know, when I was in high school, a boy would call in advance, he would ask you out, there would be a planned activity, and he would make sure one way or another that you would get home safely. But that didn't happen anymore. Now there was endless texting and Byzantine negotiations just to meet for coffee. <laughs> and then you meet some guy and he's like, yeah, I don't, I don't really date, but you know, do you want to come over in hot tub? I mean, the answer is no. No, I didn't. And I wondered what happened. Um, and I met so many men who were, you know, 50s and 60s, and they were exploring. They were still looking. Everything was so trivial. Everything was, I want to keep it light. I want to see what's out there. I mean, we're almost 60. I should think by now we might know what's out there. And also that we would want a deeper connection. Everything seemed so trivial. I wanted a deep, committed relationship. Not necessarily marriage, but the kind of relationship where you talk to each other on days you don't see each other. And you're there for each other on bad times. And you care that the person gets home safe. True story. I date this one guy, cowboy boots. He's talking about all this personal growth, which to me means he's basically screwing everything he can see. And our date goes on too long. I say, I've got to get home. My car's, you know, I took a train to meet him. My car's in the train station in the suburbs. He was in the city. He's like, oh, I'll get you home safe. It's okay. Don't worry. Well, his idea was to drop me off at a deserted bus station. And then when I called an Uber, he complained. See, one thing for grownups is maybe people don't understand this because people look at dating apps and screens. But when that screen is gone, the person still exists. Even though I'm not in your car I'm still in a deserted parking lot. Or after a date, I still want to communicate. And I was really looking for someone who was, who was invested and who thought responsibility was cool. I was a little lost by all these people trying to recapture their youth. Um, I think part of it is that our society doesn't really embrace middle age as something attractive. People always want to seem younger. You know, it's always like, oh, I travel. I love to travel. Nobody says, I love to remodel my kitchen. That seems boring, right? But I think it's the day-to-day -day things that help us to forge relationships. You know, travel doesn't necessarily make you more interesting if it doesn't help you to connect to other people. Um, the most meaningful thing, one of the most meaningful things in my current relationship is that my partner does the dishes uh, at the sink almost every night. And he does them because his father did for his mom after dinner. And to me, that is far more meaningful than all the places that we travel. I think that a lot of us as middle-aged women have kind of been told to settle, hey, there's nothing that great out there. But I think there are grown-up people. We just have to find them. And for a lot of us women, we've given up on our expectations. We think, oh, there's nobody good out there. But it's important to have expectations and not to settle. It means you value yourself. You know, people are always like, oh, I'm not like other women. I'm like so low maintenance. But what's the point of being low maintenance? That doesn't, that means someone's going to, might just take advantage of you. You need to articulate what you want. And if the guy says, well, I just want to like have fun and whatever, you, you should leave. Whatever is not an appropriate word for grownups. We should be more articulate. If we spend the night at a guy's house, we should expect breakfast the next day. We should expect someone to make plans and follow through. I wish the media did better with images of us older single folks. I mean, we go to concerts, we buy yoga pants, we do all the things younger people do, and I think we actually can do them with more style. But instead, the media is full of ads for what? Uh, medications, 
Viagra, and retirement plans. It just doesn't seem appealing to be older, but it is. It actually is, and our maturity should be something we cherish. And being aware of our mortality, we should hold out for what we want. And in my case, that was a deep, committed relationship. And I think we need to be honest about that and not market ourselves as women as being younger or being super low maintenance. I mean, who wants to be a 50 something manic pixie dream girl? And if you're going to Google that, that's a character in a movie where the woman basically exists to make the man feel good about himself, but that sort of has no real, real needs or focus of her own. I did eventually find a grown up man. And I knew he was the one because we were on a romantic date, but my air conditioner had broken and he actually put up with me listening. He listened to me talk about different bids for getting the darn thing fixed and was actually interested and invested and said, well, you know, this is a family owned business. This might be better for, for your air conditioner. So in general, that was kind of my standard actually after my husband passed was someone who could bear to listen to me talk about home repairs. He didn't have to have a home. He just had to care when I was concerned about mine instead of interrupting to talk about like that time he was at Burning Man. But I was really looking for someone who would listen to me and care. And I did find it, but it took a really long time. But what helped was being honest and being mature and talking about what I wanted. And that helped a tremendous amount. And I do believe there are adult men out there not necessarily on dating apps much of the time. This might be the kind of thing where you meet people through other activities. For me, I met folks hiking, um, synagogue. The fellow I am with, I did meet online, but I think that may have been a rarity. So there are good men out there. We just have to not settle for less. I know that those guys are probably home cleaning out their refrigerators just like we are. I hope this helped navigate the cesspool that is middle age dating. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.